So it's clear that, as Cecilia now described, the country is in the, the, the economy of Argentina is in decline. Uh, GDP is falling, the economic activity is falling, unemployment is rising, inflation is over 50% annual inflation. And in the last year and a half, the country has been using IMF resources in order to pay uh, creditors, in order, in order to service debt. And the situation is going to change from 2020. The country will not have the IMF, IMF financing in order to service the debt that is due. So there will be one more important player that will enter into the picture, with, which will be the bondholders of the country. For an economy that is already in decline, and that today faces, basically, the, the, there is no access to international credit markets for Argentina. The country risk went above 2,000 point, basis points. Borrowing at those rates will be the beginning of the year. The interest will be so high that then uh, in the next year, the country will have before. For a country that is in that macroeconomic situation, that has no access to uh, international credit markets, and that faces large payment to creditors, there are not many options on what to do. If a country tries to deepen the austerity policies that have been posted recently, that will lead to a deeper recession, and it will aggravate the problems that Mark described. The fiscal revenues will fall, and the country will be unable to repay its creditors. So there is a debt problem that needs to be addressed. And the way that I believe the, what is likely to be the next administration is thinking about this issue is that the country has to follow one main premise, which is there will not be a stabilization if there is no recovery of economic activity. And as Mark described, the program with the IMF didn't put that premise in the center. The premise is where there has to be a recovery of uh, the fiscal surplus as soon as possible, and the massive adjustments on the spending side led to a contraction in economic activity that led also to a decline in fiscal revenues. Mark was explaining that the goal was to achieve a primary balance, zero deficit in 2019, and what's interesting is that despite the austerity in public spending, the fiscal deficit will be about the same as in 2019. The projected fiscal deficit is 1.5% of GDP despite the, the contraction in public spending. So the, the problems have not been resolved and the country has been aggravated. Okay? So again, we have this problem of debt and under the premise that there will be no stabilization if there is no recovery of economic activity, something has to be done on the debt front. Again, if the country tries, if, it's important to, to take into account that the largest portion of the debt of the country is denominated in foreign currency. So if the government tries to go to uh, uh, exchange rate markets to buy the scarce US dollars in order to service that in full next year, that will of course create depreciation, more depreciation, uh, more inflation, and it will aggravate the economic situation. So there will be, I believe there will be three elements of what's coming next, and I will uh, also analyze, as I said before, how the, the, roles, the role that the U.S. will play. But these three elements are, first, the macroeconomic program that puts this premise of economic recovery at the center. Second, a, a reprofiling, which is a sort of a fancy word for restructuring uh, of the debt, a negotiation with the bondholders. And third, a renegotiation of the program with the IMF. With the bondholders, uh, the experience in the past has been quite dramatic. 
uh, we uh, might describe what happened after the default of 2001. Uh, there, was a, there was a group of uh, New York based bond holders that bought Argentinian bonds at their cheap prices between 10 and 30 cents on the dollar. They sue Argentina claiming full payment, 100 cents on the dollar, plus interest, plus compensatory interest that under New York law is very high. It's 9% the annual compensatory interest. And by the way, I think that's a, there's a problem with the legislation there, that that was enacted, that was that in 1981, when the annual inflation rate in the US was 8.9%. It was basically a protection of the claims because of inflation, but we know that today inflation is much lower, but the, the compensatory rate under New York law hasn't changed. In the recent past, Argentina had this problem and ended up losing the battle in the US courts, in New York courts especially, and uh, that imposed large costs for the country. There was no cooperation. And there is a fear that something that, like that may happen again. But the point is that no one, there is no candidate in the country today that wants a default. So it's not that the country just wants to default. The issue is that there has to be capacity to service the debts in order to be able to service the debt. It's a form of capacity. And again, in order to recover the capacity, there has to be a macroeconomic program that works. But, for, but the country won't be able to enact a reasonable macroeconomic program if it doesn't renegotiate the timing of their payments with the creditors. So that's why I think that uh, it will have the, the negotiation of the bondholders will be essential, and the role that the U.S. courts will be essential. Most of this debt is, has been issued under New York law. And finally, I go to the third uh, element, which is the issue of the IMF. This problem didn't work. The numbers are very clear, so it has to be changed, and if. But the IMF is nowadays, uh, the, the country has lost part of its autonomy. So it will have to have a constructive engagement with the IMF in order to change that, that problem. And I think that this will have important geopolitical consequences. If there is constructive dialogue, uh, not just dialogue, if there is a constructive negotiation with the IMF aligned with what the country needs in order to recover, then the US will have more influence in Argentina and then in the region. But if that doesn't happen, if the economic troubles of the country don't get resolved within the context of the existing frameworks, it will be inevitable that someone else will step in and we know the kind of geopolitical issues that are at the center of the world today, and we know the role that the different actors have been playing in Latin America. So I think uh, this will be a case that will be very important uh, for what happens in the, on the geopolitical front in, in the near future. Thank you.